Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another video before we get into the video. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications. So Nicki Minaj clocks Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion's BOA debuts at number 84 on the U.S. Payola 5 chart with 630k streams. Okay, let me know if this is a bop or a flop to you guys. I mean, this is very low compared to Piss because Nicki Minaj is not giving her any attention. Now, despite, you know, Boa dropping, Nicki Minaj Bigfoot remains the biggest debut for a solo female rap song of 2024 on Paola Fi with a 1.89 million debut. Okay. So no female rapper has been able to um top Nicki Minaj's Bigfoot on Paola Fi. But with that being said, you know, some fans are saying, well, the FTCU remakes didn't do those numbers, but the FTCU song is old, you know, but even though I felt like it was going to do more, I thought it was going to do bigger than what it did. Um, you know, that was a remix. That wasn't even really an official single. Not only that though, Megan Thee Stallion's former photographer, the one that is suing her for, um, unpaid wages and allegedly harassment that he suffered while working with Megan the Stallion, Emilio um, was in attendance at the Gag City Houston. And a lot of the Megan the Stallion fans um, are not happy with this, okay? Because he's suing, you know, Megan the Stallion. Megan and Nicki Minaj have beef. A lot of fans are saying that this is not professional and that, you know, Megan could possibly use this against him in court saying that, you know, he is a disgruntled barb or he's a fan of Nicki Minaj and that's why he's going up against her. Okay, allegedly she's going to try to use that. But at the end of the day, you know, a person can go to a concert even if their former employee does not like the other artists. I mean, there's no rule that says if you're suing one artist, you can't go to another artist concert. The only thing that you know, um, Megan might try to find out if he has been conversating with Nicki Minaj or Kelsey. And if there's evidence to prove that, you know, she can use that in court. If there was any text messages or DMs between um, Emilio and Nicki Minaj, and I think she mostly spoke to Kelsey. I think Emilio probably contacted Kelsey, told Kelsey that he was being mistreated. And then Kelsey went and told Nicki Minaj. That's what I think happened. So let me know how y'all feel about that. Nicki Minaj also will be performing at a festival, one of the biggest music festivals in the world, in Morocco, um, June 28th, 2024. Nicki Minaj's can't be stopped. She's doing festival after festival, um, still adding dates for the tour. Um, this is actually very impressive. I know after this tour, she probably going to take a very long hiatus, okay? Now, moving on to Doja Cat. Doja reigns supreme on the highest peaking female rapper by monthly listeners on Paola Fi and only female amongst five overall. Number one for the monthly listeners on Paola Fi amongst rappers is Post Malone. Post Malone, not really a rapper to me, though. Okay, so he don't count. Number two is Champagne Thickums with 86 million. Okay, Clown Gang West at 78 million. Dolja Cat at 76 million. And Travis Scott at 75 million. Okay, so let me know how y'all feel about that. Um, I think all those people except probably Kanye West get payola. I think Post Malone gets payola. Um, Champagne Thickums gets payola. Travis gets payola. Um, I don't think Kanye West gets payola though. I think he has that hardcore fan base. And Doja Cat definitely gets payola. So, you know, this accomplishment is all fine and dandy. And I think Doja Cat is a phenomenal performer, one of the best in the game. 
but is very evident that her sales never really match up, especially when she drops an album. You know, 76 million followers or listeners on Payolify, but you only did 400 copies in per sales when you drop your deluxe. So it's not really adding up. No shade. I'm not really impressed, you know, with Doja Cat's numbers, but I will say that she's one of the best female rap performers in the game and she deserves her flowers for that. Okay. Now moving on to Botch and Bitter, it looks like Botch and Bitter is getting removed off a collaboration with Sexy Red. Oh my goodness. So two days ago, it was revealed that Sexy Red has songs that she needs to complete with Gorilla Glue, JT, Scratch Off, Ice Spice, and Botch and Bitter. The Botch and Bitter collaboration is called Sports, allegedly. Now, she took to Twitter to deny it. Um, I still don't believe her. And then she decided to post um, a new version of a track list um, for her new album with certain collaborations and um, features removed. And it looks like the collaboration with Botch and Bitter is gone. Not only that, though, Sexy replied to a fan that was asking if she had a collaboration with Botch and Bitter. And she put no with the crying emoji, okay? Now, I think Sexy Red did that for two reasons. One, um, she saw the reaction she was getting on social media. And unfortunately, Botch and Bitter is not as hot as she used to be. Doing a collaboration with Botch and Bitter, especially as a female rapper, is not going to elevate your career. It's not 2018, 2020 anymore. And unfortunately, Botch and Bitter is not even the hottest female rapper out, okay? She's not even top five, in my opinion. Um, I think JT low-key hotter than her when it comes to music because, like, nobody really gets excited when she drops. So with that being said, I think that she strategically did that so she can get the barb support, just like I Spice and Doja Cat, and she saw the reaction, and the reaction wasn't positive. And she knows that right now she's hotter than Botch and Bitter. So I think she's trying to scrap the collaboration. I wouldn't be shocked if Botch and Bitter start throwing shade at Sexy Red um, on social media. Especially if, you know, Sexy Red has been asking for a collaboration behind the scenes. Now, moving on from that, also off the cheat was spotted with a fan. The picture is going viral. You know, some fans believe that he is going to sleep with this beautiful, dark-skinned woman. But I don't believe that. Because off the cheat, like light-skinned or Latino women. Okay, so I think the coast is clear. I don't think Botch and Bitter got to worry about this one. Because most of the women off the cheat sleep with are light-skinned, Latino, Hispanic, mix. Okay? He usually don't mess with dark-skinned women like that, okay? That's just his preference. You know, champagne thickums, crispies of the colorists, they're all like that. So, you know, I don't think that he's going to sleep with her, even though she's beautiful. If she was, like, you know, light-skinned or Cardi B's complexion, I think Cardi B would have, you know, trouble sleeping at night. But I think she's good. Now, moving on to scratch-off. Um, allegedly she is dropping an album pretty soon by the end of the year. Um, it's probably going to flop, probably do like 15 to 10 K first week. But, um, I heard that she is planning on responding to Ice Spice, even though I don't think she needs to. Allegedly Scratch Off got a disc record coming for Ice Spice, um, especially since Ice Spice said that, um, Scratch Off was a flop at Coachella and in the song she just dropped, Give Me the Light, which was kind of trash. Um, but a lot of rappers are using beefs to sell records. That's what Suki, you know, did with JT. You know, that's what Champagne Thickums and Kung Fu Kenny are doing. Um, you know, that's what Megan did with Nicki Minaj. So beef is selling records. So let me know how y'all feel about that. Are you guys going to tune into Scratch Off's album and her diss track towards Ice Spice? 
Now, moving on to JT. JT dropped the extended version of OK. And to be quite honest, this was not necessary, in my opinion. OK, I think she just did it so OK can move up on the charts. But if you're going to drop an extended mix of a song and somebody just diss you, you need to diss them back. OK. Now, in the song, she was saying how she don't see nobody as a threat, um, you know, be worse, be eating booty or whatever. But that wasn't hard enough for what Suki said about you. OK, I felt like the verses should have been harder, especially after somebody just put out a diss track against you. That it made no sense. OK, now I understand she might want to ignore Suki. That could be one of her plans, just to ignore Suki and not give her too much attention. But those dishes she said about you were lethal. Now, moving on to Queen B and um, Kung Fu Kenny, allegedly the queen of music and the king of rap might do another collaboration, okay? Now, um, they already did a collaboration on Queen B's album, Lemonade. Um, I think that was called Freedom. And then Queen B let him hop on the remix to America Has a Problem, which was also fire. Um, so let me know how y'all feel about that. I'm here for it. Every time they work together, the song slaps. Okay. It better just not be no country bumpkin nonsense. You know, it needs to be R&B or hip hop. Okay, no country bumpkin nonsense. I actually don't think um, Queen Bee should do any remixes for the country bumpkin album. No shade because, you know, after listening to Cowboy Carter, you know, um, again, I'm past on the album. The album wasn't that great. You know, the first week it was fire, but now to me, it just don't have the same replay value. No shade. Now, Donkey of the Day is going to Gorilla Glue. Now, it has been reported that Gorilla Glue's everything mixtape that she recently put out only did 12 album sales um, in one month after its release, according to Hits Daily Double. Okay? Now, this was the same hoe that was dragging JT saying that, oh, she was performing at cookouts. But, bitch, your recent mixtape Basically went aluminum foil and you had that song. Yeah, glow and a Megan Stallion feature and a botch and bitter cosign and you still flopping. See, this is why I don't take the female rappers seriously. How comes Nicki Minaj is the only person that's selling all these other female rappers that be bragging about their stats can't even do 50 to 30,000 first week. Okay. This is embarrassing. You was talking all that junk about JT and look at you now. 12 album sales about one month after your release. That's embarrassing, Glow. You're getting donkey of the day. And instead of dragging JT, what you need to do is try to figure out how you can get some payola from them album sales. Okay. Clearly, you are part of the flopping crew. Now, another person getting donkey of the day is Ruby Rose. Now, Ruby Rose is deleting old tweets of her basically admitting to sleeping with people in the industry when she was not of age. One tweet says, sometimes you have to lie about your age when it comes to these NFL players. Okay, so that's what one tweet says. Then she said, the game just insta dm me. In real life, I can't breathe. Now, this is when she was around 16, 17 years of age. And then here's another tweet that says, just got invited to fly out to Cali to watch my boo play. Go Chargers. The only question is, will my mom say yes? So she's deleting tweets of her basically admitting that she was getting ran through since she was a teenager um, and she still can't find a hit song. OK, now it has been revealed that when she was 16, 17, she was messing with um, Travis Scott, the festival killer, you know, allegedly Young Thug and Playboy Cardi and allegedly the game. Now, Ruby Rose and her loose coochie walls will be receiving donkey of the day because at the end of the day, 
You mess with all these rappers and you still can't find a hit. How you get ran through by the whole industry and your career is still in the toilet. Bad coochie management. That's what this is. Okay? I mean, I don't understand how you slept with all these rappers, all these NFL players, and you still don't got a record deal, still don't got one hit under your belt. All you're known for is throwing ass and being naked on Instagram. None of those rappers and producers that you slept with could write you a hit song. Is that what you're telling me? Sexy Red just got in the game, already surpassed you. Ice Spice just got in the game, already surpassed you. You light skin, you got a nice body, and you're a whore. What's the issue? I don't get it. You too focused on being an Instagram thought that you haven't really been focusing on your career. And another thing with Ruby Whore with the loose coochie... I also noticed that she be throwing a lot of shade at Nicki Minaj, but yet Nicki Minaj never got ran through by the industry and still flopping on the charts. You can't even get an EBT award, ho. All this talking shit, yet you still a flopping, loose coochie bitch. Ain't that sad. I do not feel bad for Ruby Rose getting groomed and ran through at the age of 16, 17. Sorry, I don't feel bad for her. Um, you know, she was more focused on her career and less focused on being a gold digger thought. Maybe she would have improved in life, but that's all she's really known for. And so at the end of the day, she's receiving donkey of the day. Okay. Too busy throwing it back. You need to be focused on your raps because your music career is trash. Now, moving on to Champagne Thickums, he continues to take L after L, the new Ho King, in Toronto, the restaurant Kung Fu Kenny mentioned in Euphoria, which is in Toronto, has a new Kendrick Lamar special in their menu, which is a slap in the face to Champagne Thickums because Champagne Thickums is from Toronto and he don't even have his own menu there. And also he had that restaurant in his new music video, Family Matters. Okay. And so, you know, this is evidence that Kung Fu Kenny won, okay? Not only did your bodyguard get shot the same week Kung Fu Kenny is dominating the charts, but now New Ho King, the restaurant in Toronto, which was mentioned in Euphoria, which is a diss to you, and you're from Toronto where the restaurant is, is now praising Kung Fu Kenny like, you need to just sit the F down for the rest of the year. This is L after L. Also, Kung Fu Kenny becomes the first rapper ever to have multiple songs receive over 50 million streams in the same week. Euphoria and Not Like Us. And then allegedly, there is a Not Like Us music video coming soon. Okay, you know, allegedly, um, they have shot a music video for the Not Like Us disc record, and it should be coming soon. So that's going to be very interesting. I don't know how you can do a music video to that song. It's, it's kind of vulgar. Like, it's going to be very interesting to see how that's done and who's going to be in the music video. But basically, all this proves is that Kung Fu Kenny is the king of rap. He is dominating the Toronto charts. He's dominating the charts all over the globe. And Champagne Thickums needs to just go back on the surgery table and lay low um, and probably just take a hiatus and never mention Kung Fu Kenny ever again, okay? You don't need to be battling no more people. You need to just stay in Toronto and uh, keep a low profile. Like I said before, I think he should just move to Minnesota or Kentucky or Alabama and just, you know, forget about music for at least two years. But anyway, I got some hot tea on Patreon link in description, and I hope you have a great day.